Hi everybody, we're wrapping up day one here, the Cube's coverage of CDO IQ from Cambridge, Massachusetts. The 18th annual CDO IQ conference that started with in Washington DC in Crystal City with I think what 29, maybe 30 people, or up to well over 700 today. I'm here with Sanjeev Mohan, my co-host, and we're really excited to have Krishna Velaru, who's the Vice President and Team Leader of Advanced Strategies and Research Technologies at Fidelity Investments, local company. Heard of Fidelity before, so uh, <laughs> thank you so much for com for coming on theCUBE. I know you have some some disclaimers you'd like to get out beforehand, Krishna, yes, so uh, please first, do so. Yeah, thank you for having me, and um, so these are my views only, and not Fidelity views, just I want to get it out of the way before we start, actually, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, Fidelity, very advanced company, a lot of secret sauce that we're not going to be able to talk about, but we can de generally talk about, yeah. you know, what's happening at this conference, um, Maybe you start with your role at, at Fidelity. What's your purview? Yeah. So I lead advanced strategies and research technology team, and my team's responsibility is to um, process alternative data sets and to combine with traditional data set and uh, provide the data ready for our analysts to process and run AI engines on it so that they can make some investment decisions. You've been with Fidelity for decades, yeah, yes? For, yeah, so for when you 23 start, years. Yeah. For how many years? 23, 23 years. 23 years, so when you started your career, it was it was a lot more structured data that right. you were analyzing, True. you know, than to probably using a lot of spreadsheets, probably still do use a lot yeah, of spreadsheets, but, but the amount of unstructured data has just, yeah. you know, been immense. Yeah, um, how, how, what do you, how, how do you think about that? How do you handle that? Um, any thoughts from an advanced strategy standpoint? Yeah, no, I think definitely. I think for the past, like, it, decades, a couple of decades now, actually it is increasing, increasing a lot now as we understand. And handling the unstructured is our primary responsibility and uh, it is very, uh, the scale is the biggest problem. So out of that, how do you scale? You can experiment, you can do certain, um, like you know, uh, value, like you know, if you have a business use case, you can deliver the use case. However, the del uh, scaling is the biggest uh, uh, challenge for us, that is what we are focusing on. So first we start looking into how should we have a proper governance, proper um, the quality, and then uh, can we scale or not, and then we can look into the use cases and then deliver uh, that product. And s scaling today is not just simply throwing it in the cloud and throwing compute and storage resources. At it, the AI brings a new dimension to scaling, does it not? It does. So AI will definitely will help, but at the same time, it is more of an art. How do you cook that recipe versus like you have all the ingredients of you have tools, you have data, you have unlimited of everything. You have in the cloud, we can have unlimited resources. In the data as well, you can have unlimited of data of anything. But how do you cook that recipe is the key. So for that, it is definitely AI is as is an aspect. Plus also, it is not just a science, but also, so also I say, is an art as well. Interesting. So yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because I've known Krishna for a couple of years now. I see him at CDO IQ, and the work you're doing is outstanding, but of course, <clears throat> we don't have permission to talk about it. So staying at a, at a general level, uh, when you work with unstructured data, you mentioned data quality becomes really uh, key. How do you define data quality for unstructured data? It's very different from structured data, right? So what are the metrics? Correct, and it, it is all fit for purpose. Like, you know, for, depending on the use case, what is a fit for purpose? And we look for <coughs> oh, how, what is the uh, like business use case starts from there, and we walk backwards on how should we, what are the qualities we define on the fly. I see. So depending on the use case. And then we create some reusable <coughs> components as well. It is, you know, and then you can, so that you can scale for other business use cases. But you are right, absolutely, actually it is a, problem and the challenge, um, and, it's a, and at the same time actually you can solve a problem, yeah. but now how can you scale to different, apply to different problems is uh, right. challenging. But how do you, in the unstructured data, it can be in like many different formats, and people may say in many different ways. For example, you have Tim Cook, and you, they can say like, you know, Timothy Cook or Apple CEO, how can you identify that person from that structured data? Is that person you are talking to? Mm -hmm. That's a challenge, but at the same time, now with the Gen AI, 
that can help with depending given the context of the AI. You can identify that, oh, Apple CEO is Tim Cook, Timothy Cook or Tim Cook MBA, all are the same individuals. So that's how we can uh, scale with the Gen AI now. That is so, super so exciting. So this is an <coughs> example of entity resolution. Yeah. Correct. Which, which, you know, is a structured, more of a structure. More of a, from unstructured, you can from extract so this. So extract yeah. the entities Correct. and then you yeah. use AI. But what I really liked was, uh, what he just said was that data quality is fit for purpose. So it's the same unstructured data, like a text document, could have very different data quality aspects depending upon what the use of, the, of that is. Correct. Yeah, exactly, yeah, that's right. But so, yeah. you take that entity resolution example, Tim, Timothy, uh, T Timmy Cook has an yeah. MBA. Mm -hmm. yeah. y y when you do that entity resolution, you're inferring from maybe some other unstructured data, m m some of that, much of that could be personal information, so you have to have that, has to, that you have to worry about privacy yeah. and governance, and obviously fidelity, you're in a highly regulated industry, so that's a, that's a big challenge today, is it not? It is a challenge, and so some of the data that you can classify them as public, so you have to understand what is public data. Mm -hmm. So any company CEOs, any board members are public. And for example, if uh, personally, if uh, like Sanjeev goes in and enters some comments or some reviews in somewhere, if you are not a public figure, you can your identity can be still be personal. Mm -hmm. And so we have to treat who are the public figures and versus the who are the private um, that we cannot, we have to make sure that uh, governance is in place. So absolutely right, we can scale pretty fast, but we don't want to uh, impact the governance or the policies, we should not violate them. So that's a challenge as well as part of the and delivering a product. And that starts with the data classification. True. Uh, if, if, uh, is that right? Yeah, so, yeah, true. But what is the state of data classification today? I remember when, yeah. uh, the federal rules of civil procedure hmm. changed in 2006 and email archiving yeah. was a thing. The way you would classify data was with math. You'd use support vector machines or probabilistic latent semantic indexing. You know, is it, these are well-known mathematical techniques. Is that the same way today or is, it, is AI kind of enhanced that mathematics? Or what's the state of data classification today? There are a number of uh, communities of practice, we can say in industry, that are open source now. So there are like uh, some FIBO models which are like, uh, um, like open that you can use, but still they're not yet ready. So the new things are evolving. As they evolve, how do you make sure that you are up to speed on that? How your models can um, consume that latest information or new rules? Every day we are hearing some new policies across the globe are applied, you know, like you have European, California, New Jersey, and every other state are thinking about coming up new policies. How do you, in, you know, in, inject them into your models, make sure you are adhering to the policies is, and governance, that's the biggest um, challenge. And, and part of your, is part of your role just understanding what's coming down the, 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 the pike in terms of new technologies, uh, is that right or is it, yes, okay. That's right, emerging, we look at all the emerging ones, so that is the reason I'm here today at the CDO IQ one, and looking at what is emerging, how can I uh, st m change any strategies internally, <laughs> and how can we use them in the advanced world, so from emerging to the advanced, that that's where what I look for, and implement them. Like you have like many vector databases, mm -hmm. and others are evolving now, so which are prominent. So when you saw, when did you first, when did when did LLMs first hit your radar, and and then what did you think when you saw the the AI heard around the world, like with ChatGPT? Yeah. You no, know, it is interesting. You know, Boston is a great community. You have you know at back in 2015, 2016 at you know, Rakuten, they were in South Station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had a meetup at that point and they were talking about GPTs, generating an image by with the text and then it started at the time. And then we were watching that, at, say I'm watching at least at, since then. And all of a sudden when the application came, so we don't know how to use it until the chat GPT came up. So chat GPT really said that, oh, this is how you can use it. So extracting information from the text or generating content, and that is where it changed now. Did all the techies 
in your world just like light up and, and buzz and like pull all nighters and start to huddle? How can we use this? Or what was that moment like? I, know, I think <laughs> it is uh, so you cannot do that in any enterprise if yeah, you are, you I know, just thinking yeah, you cannot do there, that. There yeah. have so many restrictions, like, yeah, you know, I, when yeah. I say light up, I mean yeah. just get excited yeah. and start talking about it, and yeah. And, uh, yeah. It is good to get excited to yeah. see how it is and then slowly slow down actually. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so I would say that like, definitely yeah. we should get that. I think otherwise we can't like, you know, take any technology to that level. So number one. Number two is that what we look for is um, like, you know, I think at the enterprise we have some standards. Like, you know, you have to use that. Make sure everything is like, you know, stable and it has to go through. It should be in a generally available state until then we cannot use it. So, but at the same time you can see how, where other technology are emerging hmm. and you can uh, identify them a little bit faster so that either you can use them in an operational and not at the end user level but at the operational side you, any efficiencies you can uh, improve that will be that's what we can look for uh, yeah. exciting times now so did, did the introduction mm -hmm. of large language models and in, in, in GPTs did it change you mentioned you have standards did you have to, do you have to sort of rethink those standards um, or so, ex extend yeah. them in different ways? Yeah, so personally, I don't work directly with LLMs. We have other teams who are working yeah, on yeah. it, but I support them actually. But at the same time, we have some, like, you know, I think any, um, t we should have the governance in place and proper governance, so the proper guardrails, so that when they come up with some product, they are sure that that product, they can take it to market. At that time, they don't want to have surprises that, oh, here is a policy violation, here is some governance is there. And so instead of that, it is like, you know, with the proper guardrails, uh, then they can take that to production, you know? Hmm. Okay, so um, <clears throat> you've seen a lot of technology waves. Yeah. You worked at Gartner, you guys invented the hype cycle, but <laughs> I don't think you developed the hype uh, cycle. No, no, no. I've always amazed. I, it's like the buzzword cycle. Yes, <laughs> It's amazing. Yes. But anyway, yeah. you, when you think about AI and generative AI specifically. Your opinion, how do you see it relative to other like transformative technologies? The internet, people, a lot of people say, yeah. and Michael Dell on theCUBE has said, oh no, this is bigger. A lot of people have said that, he's not alone. Yeah. What do you, what do you yeah. think, what do you guys think? No, I think I have seen like internet bubble and at the time in 2000s and I think we are at 95 Windows, mm -hmm. ni you know, 90, Windows 95, Windows 98 at that era. And I think um, it can change the world, definitely. I think I feel like looking at the generative AI and what it can do, the main challenges of back then to create a website is like, you know, it works on Internet Explorer, breaks on Netscape, if you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so it is the same thing. If you use one LLM model, it works, and in another LLM model, it breaks. So it depends on that where that LLM come from. That's a different thing. But we are at that stage of 95, 98 era, and I see that in a couple of years, it will take off like an internet. It's another internet, I, I would say. I see that way, like an, or another iPhone. What do you but think? You think as big? Oh, bigger? yeah, uh, bigger. You think bigger? Yes. Yeah. Bigger yeah. than mobile? Yes, bigger than mobile. It's mobile, social, yes. big data, internet, bigger than the internet. The, I, I, that's what I believe. I would agree, yes. by the way, because, it, because yeah. you have the internet. Correct. And you have the cloud. Right. So yeah. it, it actually yeah. should be, and you have a lot of money yeah. going so, in. So what's going to happen is the shine is going to come off. Which is kind of starting now. Starting already. Yeah. And then the work will still happen, but it'll go sort of away from the mainstream in your face. And then in five years, it'll become mainstream. Just like what happened with the internet. So, you know. Uh, yeah. But the, the, the yeah. question I have for you is, yeah. is it like uh, something that you, you're looking forward to, some, some change? Like, you know, the, we have the transformer architecture. Transformer mm -hmm. architecture really changed everything. Yes. Uh, but uh, knowing technology, uh, you know, something new is going to come up. Do you see limitations of the way Gen AI, Gen AI is done today and something that you expect will change? Yeah, you know, definitely. I think, so it is interesting. Today, there will be some changes will come. I mm. think I'm expecting as well. So this is interesting. I have two different personal AWS accounts. Hmm. I, this is an example, actually. I tried with a program, with a Python, wrote a Python, used rags, sent a PDF, asked questions in one account. 
Hmm. Use it the same model, exact <laughs> model, <laughs> and use it the same. I, I copied the code. Going. I used the code, yeah. and then I sent the same PDF. Ask a question in here. They are giving different answers. Oh wow! So same chunking. So the chunking parameters. Yes. I tried tuning them. Yeah. Same exact. Here at one account A, yeah. I get like I cannot answer. I set proper guardrails in mm. couple of one of the cloud vendor. So and then here I set the same settings. no change and i'm still scratching my head of why is that yeah. so i think it is until we reproduce the results and that is when it can take off there is definitely there is hype to it and there is some technology needs to improve and right now it is like our internet back in 95 98 and mm. you know how they you know you can send something it generates back then it was there you you know you can generate html web pages on the fly mm. but and then you have to it generates like you know 20000 lines you have to cut it down and make it like you know usable really that is where i see now in gen ai world so it takes the technologies to improve definitely number one number two is the cost and cost should decrease a lot hmm. and we should be able to use on any device i think they are coming now i think i see you know even in uh, nvidia was is uh, amds yeah. they you can train <laughs> some on amds as well Correct. now so i think uh, and and like you know you the i think that and then the, we have use cases hmm. we have recipes already and we have ingredients and i think that tools are needs to definitely needs to come down Th is is mm -hmm. it's interesting <coughs> the example you just gave but the, everything was identical but yeah. the results are different is that because we don't know how it actually works is so it still a black box technically is it is a black box in fact i am shocked that even uh, Uh, data scientists hardcore uh, neural network people cannot tell you how exactly llm works because it's got so many layers and layers and layers that it works but how it works is is a complete black box even for them it's is kind of like magic i mean not yeah. to me the way that aws turned the data center into an api right and it democratized the access to technology yeah. for any company small company can now have your know, fidelity class you know infrastructure um maybe not the people but the the, the access to that infrastructure through AWS you now have a situation where technology where, where LLMs turning technology into a natural language hmm. interface and yeah. putting that at the fingertips of virtually everybody you know, kind of like search did but in a much more powerful yep. way correct it's yeah. that to me is why i think it's going to be bigger even though we're working through these problems these yeah, 95 yes. 98 right. problems yeah so i i uh, read something very interesting you know we talk about hallucination yeah. uh, as being the problem the output of a probabilistic model is always hallucination always now whether by definition yeah, by yeah, definition yeah, yeah. because because it's just a statistical model that is just estimating what it should say so it is by definition hallucination if it's up to your liking then it's fine yeah. if it is not then it's a problem <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. or, or or if yeah. you're trading stocks based on it it's a problem right. <laughs> yes. Right. yes yes yeah. Yeah. So, yeah yeah so interesting yeah. other Is there anything else on your radar that you can talk about that is exciting you right now? So I'm excited about any problems that I have or any challenges. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge is the data quality. I think no matter how much we do and still it is insufficient because if we have we have to make some decisions down the road if you are answering something with this AI, mm. we have models, we have everything. They're at good at their place at the same time using their output. How can you prescribe if they prescribe something? Can we use it in production or not? That's a challenge. For that, how can you have a good data quality, good data governance? and human in the loop i think that's uh, exciting as well so i think all these are exciting challenges now how far out do you look i mean do you look at things like quantum um or is that too far it's not <laughs> no not i think it is there it is also coming i think you know quantum yeah. is coming it's as it's well it's finally time yeah, to pay is, attention yeah, it is, isn't it exactly it is time yeah. to pay attention and do you think the ai and quantum yeah. come together yeah, i think so you see really? quantum i think oh, quantum wow. can do good calculations at some point right i think you know so i think they ca they can be independent you know they can be independent but you can use it the same level of uh like you know like i would say you know like i think it they can go in tandem 
so it is not like either mm. or or it, it can, they can go in tandem or some of the output from gen ai can be used in quantum some of the quantum outputs can be used in gen ai some like in you know, a math it can do math pretty fast we know that ibm so, ibm will love you for that yeah yeah no, <laughs> <laughs> were you at gtc uh no so we had a private meeting yeah. the analysts yeah. at, at gtc with jensen yeah and he said a couple of things that were interesting on quantum. He said, we're the biggest qu company, qu quantum computer company that doesn't make quantum computers. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> and then he said something that was controversial. He said, pretty much anything that you can do with quantum, you can do with AI. Hmm. Um, with the exception, he was saying, of cryptography. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people say, I, that's not true. Yeah. And so, but, yeah. but the fact that he said it, it's Jensen. Anything Jensen says. Right. Be true. <laughs> Anything yeah. Jensen says, we take it as gospel. But, yeah. but he yeah. says a lot of things that are not necessarily uh, going to be the fact. Like, for example, he's saying, stop teaching your kids coding languages. It's yeah. finished yeah. that era. But I, I don't think so. <laughs> no, it's I think we right. still need I to. I hope yeah. not. Right? Yeah. I mean, no, I think there's, yeah. there's logic involved and, right. you know, yeah. structure. Right. And, yeah. and he says, the other thing he says is, is Jensen's law. You know, we have. We have Moore's law, yes, yeah. which is the you know semiconductors. We had uh, Metcalf's law, which yeah. was the internet, yeah. right? Scale, yeah. uh, and 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 now we have Jensen's law, which is buy more, save more. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> that's, yes. His, that's yeah. his law. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Kirsten, thanks yeah, so much thank for you. coming. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so, so much. Great to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hope yeah, to have you back thank sometime. You. Yeah, thank you. All right, keep it right there. We're going to wrap up day one just after this. This is Dave Vellante for Sanjeev Mohan. You're watching the Cube's coverage, CDO IQ 2024. We'll be right back right after this short break. Thank you.